Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Furious FPV 2.4 gigahertz combo. Now you can get them separately or the combo I chose in for the combo here. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz receiving module. It's a diversity receiving module from Furious FPV and it has a lot of crazy features. Now this is a 16 channel receiver and this combo also comes with the Furious FPV selectable up to 800 milliwatt 16 channel 2.4 gigahertz transmitter. And we'll get into the transmitter in a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about the module itself here. We're also going to be connecting and taking a look at some of the options and seeing how well everything works. So theoretically, you should get around double the range with the amount of milliwatts. So for example, if a 5.8 gigahertz VTX on optimal conditions on 200 milliwatts will get you around close to one kilometer, which is a thousand meters, this should in theory get you around double. So and it is selectable up to 800 milliwatts, which is going to be pretty insane distance. So let's take a look at what comes with the Fat Shark module here. So you obviously you get it just as is like this out of the box, which is really nice. And they do provide you with two adapters, one at a 45 degree angle and then the other one at a 90 degree angle, which is really nice to see. And to be honest, it's, it's actually a really big bonus here but instead of having to go purchase these because you couldn't use your antennas. Now talking about antennas, this package does not come with any antennas, so you'll have to pick some up. Now you can't use the 5.8 gigahertz or it's not really recommended because you need special 2.4 gigahertz antennas. And I've also picked up two of these right here and these are little combos that come with a patch antenna and a circular antenna and the reason why I picked up two is because I'm gonna have one on the module well I'm gonna have two on the module the patch as well as the circular antenna and the reason why I picked up two is because the other circular polarized antenna will be connected to the VTX as you can tell here they are pretty massive antennas and it's really nice to have a spare also so that little box right there comes with two and again I picked up two of these a patch antenna for 2.4 gigahertz as well as a cloverleaf antenna so it's highly recommended to pick these up when you pick up this combo or when you pick them up separately all right, so let's take a look at the VTX here. Now, the VTX is a little bit bigger than most. It's around the same size as the AKK Ultimate VTX. And as you can tell here, it's 26, around 26 millimeters in, in width. Its overall length is around 38 millimeters and its highest points are at around 10 millimeters. So if we take a look at the connector, it does come with the normal basic standard size now VTX type of connector and they do provide that for you and it's right here. Now what's so cool about this is they have it pretty much prepared for you. You have the power for the VTX which just takes I believe 9 to 24 volts or I think a 3S to a 6S input here which is nice to see. It also has a 5 volt regulator on board for the camera so that's a huge plus and the camera wire is pretty much prepared for almost any type of camera. Basically everything that's been re released lately. For example here is the, the FX Mars Pro. All you got to do is insert it like so all the way to the edge and you're good to go as you can tell 5 volt ground and video so we're going to take a look at this in a little bit here another thing they do provide you with are two mmcx two sma connectors here now one is going to be a straight fit as you can tell here and the other one's going to be a 90 degree angle just in case if you needed that so it's really nice to even add that flexibility into the package because you're paying a premium price and they also provide you with a nice big fat heat shrink which till this day i still can't find online and if anyone knows any please let please leave a link down below so this vtx is selectable anywhere between 25 milliwatts to 800 milliwatts which is really nice and there's fcc standard as well as the european version and there's the unlocked version and i think i do have the unlocked version currently and it is a 16 channel transmitter here and they're stating that do not use audio with this so if you're expecting audio, you're not going to get audio. Or if you do use audio, so you'll have some sort of issues. That's what they're stating in the manual. I haven't tested it, so I can't really answer that. So on the back side of the VTX, we don't have a display to tell you what you're broadcasting on, but we do have an RGB LED with an instruction manual that tells you just about everything you need to know about the RGB LED here. So as you can tell here, if it's blinking red once, that means it's 25 milliwatts, twice it's 200, three times 500, and four times it's 800 milliwatts. And the band, if you're on band A, it's blinking green once, and the green is blinking twice if you're on B, and then the channel is blue, depending on how many times it blinks is what channel you're on. And as you can tell, it's a 16 channel transmitter. So another cool thing about the VTX I've noticed Notice is once you turn off the receiving module this will actually start blinking like it lost connection which is something really cool I don't know what you can use it for but I do know that this has an RGB LED output so if you wanted to connect RGB LEDs to this thing you can and you can possibly control to do all kinds of crazy things so let's connect this up and check out that beautiful OSD on the receiving module 
All right, so first I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery. I've set up the battery to take a three direct 3S right there through an XD60, and you'll see that in a little bit. So right now I'm just inserting the MMCX so I don't burn this guy, and I'm also gonna be adding an antenna. I don't know if these work like 5.8 gigahertz, but they probably do since they're outputting a lot of amperage, or milliwatts, sorry. All right, so now this is booted here currently, and out of the box default, it comes broadcasting 25 milliwatts on channel A8. So let's put this to the side now, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Fat Shark module, and let's take a look at this. So I'm going to be connecting my 2.4 gigahertz Fat Shark module to the VR006 with the Fat Shark mod. If you missed that video, uh, go ahead and check it out. It'll be in a couple videos back, or I'll have it linked down below. So let's go ahead and boot the goggle here. All right. So as you can tell here now the module has booted and we're just waiting for it to finish booting. And what's so cool about this, it does have an on-built, in-built temperature sensor, which is really nice. And as you can tell here, it does have OSD, but that's not even the best part. It even has an OSD on the inside. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So first of all, I have to choose the correct AV input. All right, so I've gone ahead and chosen the correct AV input. Now, as you can tell here on the bottom, we do have OSD. The, the, the top, the uppermost OSD is coming from the camera. The bottom left is coming from the goggle itself here. But up top here, we do have an RSSI reading. And it's really nice that you can see that with the on-screen display. Now, if you want, usually in most Fat Shark modules, when you want to go ahead and start changing something on the module, you will not get a screen, anything on the screen here. You have to take off the goggle, flip it over, click the button and do what you want to do. But now what's going on is it's actually relaying the OSD inside, which is really cool. However, it does stop the image that's coming in from your camera when you do that. So take that into consideration. Now, some of the options that we have here are save channels. So we can go ahead and save channels as you can tell right there. We also have all channels, so we can select through all channels if we wanted to. Currently I'm on A8 as you can tell. And then if I wanted to go to search, it'll even have a search and it has a band scanning mode. And let's go ahead and check out the OSD because I think that's the most interesting part here. So here you can turn on and off the OSD and you could change the type of OSD that it's relaying the RSSI information. You have a bar, which I find to be the best actually. And then you also have graph. Graph is a little bit difficult to make out of depending on the lighting condition of the camera that it's broadcasting in. And then none also, and then we also have simple. So let's go ahead and check out simple here. And here, this is the icon would be for each, uh, antenna. So if your top antenna is a circular polarized, you keep it like that. But if they were both patch antennas, you can switch this over and you'll know which antenna. So I'm going to keep it as is like this. And the bottom one is usually the patch antenna. So we can set up the call sign too. So you can have your own name on there, like drone mesh or, or whatever you want to put. I have mine off. You also have RSSI warnings, which we'll have a look at that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and exit and take a look at the simple RSSI reading. And as you can tell here, they do give us those numbers right there, right in the corner. I had to find something black so you could kind of get a better view of this. So let's just turn this over like this. So as you can tell right now, up in the left-hand corner, we have the current channel we're on and we do have the reading for each of them. So the top one is a circularized polarized antenna and we're getting 99% uh, percent reading and as well as the patch antenna, even though I have no antennas on board here. Um, so yeah, that's really nice. This is simple view. However, I, like I mentioned, I prefer more of the bar, but at the end of the day, that's completely up to you here. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it as bar and then let's go ahead and take a look if it changed. So uh, that's really nice. I really like seeing that right there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other settings that we have. So if we go to the settings here, we have video where we could choose if it's PAL or NTSC. Now they're saying that it's best to choose uh, manually what your camera is outputting. However, I have it on auto and it's been working flawlessly. So I have nothing to worry about there. This is the call sign. So the call sign is what's going to be relayed on the information if you have it enabled on the OSD. So you can change this. Currently it says furious. I could change it to drone mesh and it'll constantly say drone mesh inside the OSD. So when you're recording, that's what you get. So it's really nice in that perspective. Here we have auto lock. So it just locks the thing uh, if you wanted to, to lock so you don't press a button by mistake. And this is what's really cool. This is the RSSI warning, as you can tell here. And you can set this up to whatever you want, up to 50%. So you can say, no warning. At 20% RSSI, start giving me a warning. 35% and 50% and then back to none. So I'm gonna leave that around 35% seems good for me. Module B, so you can, since this is a diversity module, you can turn off one of them and you can just keep using the, the first module. So this is what this means. You could turn off the second module if you wanted to. However, I'm gonna keep it on. And if we go here, we have quick boot. 
Uh, we could turn this on. This just removes the intro logo so it'll boot a little bit quicker. And this is restore, so if you want to restore your settings, if you messed up, just press and hold that and you should be good to go. And here we have the exit. So overall, it's a really nice piece of hardware and I will be doing long range testing on this, but I thought I would do a quick just overview of the little device here, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and check out band scanner here and seeing how well this works. It, it feels a lot slower than the 5.8 gigahertz version of the band scanner, but it's still working. You only have 16 channels, so you're not gonna be waiting a trillion years for that. So that's really nice in that perspective. You can pause it and then we can just exit. And then here we have the search. Search is a little bit also, it's a little slower than uh, the 5.8 gigahertz modules, but that's totally fine. I guess it's to be expected. Um, so yeah, overall it's looking really good. So if I switch over, well, I can't really switch over the channel right now, but overall, this thing is looking really nice, but that's all we can currently say. And I just want to do a quick uh, overview video, taking a look at the 2.4 gigahertz from Furious FPV, which is a really nice piece of hardware here. And I can't wait to do the long range testing. I've been calculating distances on the place I fly and how far I am, one kilometer, two kilometers and three kilometers. And we could change back and forth between 5.8 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz and seeing uh, how much of a boost we got and is it really worth it. So I'm really excited for this and there's gonna be a lot of long range testing other than these types of Fat Shark modules. We're also gonna be doing module testing for transmitters and some with VTXs, uh, Fat Shark modules, 2.4 gigahertz and as well as the transmitters themselves from FlySky, from FRSky and I'll try to get others in as well and we'll be testing the R9M module against the TVS Crossfire and all these kinds of crazy cool things. So it is to be expected and I really hope this performs because I have a lot of high hopes for this. This will be my video broadcasting system on the flying wing which will be my long range testing setup for this channel. So well, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this and seeing how well it's going to perform very soon. And well, that's going to conclude it for my current review or overview of the Furious FPV 2.4 gigahertz. I really hope it was useful to someone out there. And if you guys like this content, please consider joining my Patreon or you can use the links down below before you make purchase. It does greatly support the channel. And well, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.